Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and any interplanetary species who might be listening and wondering how to do vocal chops and pitches. There are many different ways you can chop and pitch vocals, and depending on what you want to achieve, there'll be different ways of going about it. Do you just want the sort of odd little vocal pitched phrase just here and there, or word or whatever, just to sort of embellish the main vocal, or are you literally trying to make like a whole chorus out of just chopped and pitched vocals? So we're going to cover both. So just very, very quickly before we actually get into the meat and potatoes or tofu and potatoes, if you're vegan, whatever, I just want to show you very quickly what we're actually going to accomplish in this lesson. OK, so we've got at the moment a very standard sort of vocal. OK, and we're going to take it and we're going to make this out of it. So that's one version that's uh, making a more sort of playable version and then we also make this one as well in the second lesson i'll just play that for you so oh sorry no it's not that one i beg your pardon there we go so those are just two examples of what we're going to be able to do so stick around for the next 15 minutes and i'll show you exactly how to do it if you want just the odd sort of pitched vocal then that's really easy especially in cubase of course you can pretty much do this in any door as well just play a little bit of this track so you get an idea of what we're working on <laughs> Okay, so that's enough of that. Let's just have a look at creating just one-off vocal pitches or vocal chops and pitches. So let's take, uh, let's just pick a nice word. Let's go here. Love. Love starts right there. Okay, so we're going to snip it and let's turn off our snap. So we're just snipping it, basically the phrase or word or whatever it is. It could just be a vowel on its own that you want. I'm going to right click that, go to create sampler track. And there we go. It's created us a sampler track and now it's muted. Let's unmute our vocal and then we got a playable. <laughs> So obviously we can then go for it and start programming in some sort of musical melody. And um, just so you know as well, uh, if you want to make this a bit more acceptable and a bit less uh, corny sounding as you're going up or down in pitch, basically activate audio warp and go to solo mode. And then if you're going up in pitch, the more formant you've got, the more natural it will sound. And if you're going down in pitch, then obviously you want a negative value on the formant. It will give it a sort of more, slightly more natural feel. And of course, then you just have to draw in your, mm -hmm, turn the snap back on. So let's just draw in a little bit, just as an example. So there we go, we got a single little pitch on its uh, pitched up vocal on its own. Okay, that's fine, no problem. But what happens when you want to make an entire track, oh, sorry, an entire section, like a chorus section out of a vocal, which is obviously, you hear it all the time in pop music and dubstep and house music and whatever. It's just a really sort of popular thing to do. Okay, so this is gets a little bit more complicated, but it's still not that difficult to do. So we're going to take this section here, which is right after the chorus, and I just want a nice vocal chopped sort of thing in here. Let's just have a listen to the end of the chorus. <laughs> So, okay, this is our section here, and it's just, I mean, it's fine on its own, but it's a little bit boring. I'd like to have some vocal pitchiness in there. So, let's make some vocal pitchiness. Right, there's a couple of ways that we can do this. Now, one is going to be using the sampler, and this is going to be sort of more for people who want to jam out 
uh, a, like a different sort of rhythm or whatever try some different stuff um, you'll understand what I'm talking about in a second when I actually get to it so I'm going to copy over a complete version of that vocal I just got a nice fresh version here double click go into the audio editor and rather than very audio we don't want that we want to go to hit point detection we'll turn on edit hit points and let's just have a look at what we got so we can just with the edit hit points selected we can just listen to each one Everybody's. and we can adjust the threshold of the detection here so as you bring it down you can see these little markers appear that's just basically Cubase telling you where it thinks each word is so let's just bring that down a little bit uh, let's just try that so we're gonna have to go through and edit this so I'm gonna show you how to edit these hit points Every we want this to be a nice concise Everybody's. phrases or whole words basically Everybody's. Obviously that's one word, so to delete one of these markers, you hold down shift and you can just delete the hit point. Now this is important, you're going to want to create a new version. You don't want to edit the original particularly because uh, some of these things that we do like creating slices, all these things down the side here, creating slices, creating events will sort of mess with the original. So just create a new version, uh, da, 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 da. yes, new version. Now we've got rid of that marker. Everybody. So again, we need to get rid of this marker there. And again, weird, but we can move this marker. So I think that's here to find, obviously. Find. And that's a bit early, that one as well. Oops. So, find the love. And again, at the end, we just want to snip that there. So we've got the love, the love. The love. Okay, it's fine. And then if you want to add a marker, so I don't obviously want these massive uh, spaces at the end here. So I'm just going to hold down Alt and stick in a marker. And then love. we just got love. Uh, and this bit we can just ignore for now. That's fine. So let's go on to the second half of this vocal. Just quickly do this. Everybody's time tonight. And again, we don't want one at the end. So that's it. Fine. Okay, so we've got that nicely split up. So now we've all got nice, easy to understand words. I don't have to be, you could actually snip this up very much, uh, very differently if you want. You could snip that into sort of just the sort of vowel sounds and stuff like that. Uh, that's fine, no problem if you want to do that. Now let's just go create slices. Bosh, and you'll see that the sort of audio has changed now. It's all kind of gone slightly out of time and it's got all these weird sort of marks everywhere. So if you double click on it now, you can see we've actually got all these separate snips and everything and we don't need that. Um, we don't need the one at the end either. That's just noise basically. Uh, so you can get rid of those ones. And then we've got, we're left with just the words that we snipped up. Now, in order to make this playable, what we need to do is bring up our right hand zone load an instrument we're going to load groove agent se which is just under drums and then go add track so if you were using a different door you could use um like the excs 24 sampler in logic you've got a sampler i can't remember what it's called in fl studio and um, there's obviously other things but almost every single door has its own sampler now we've got that open all we've got to do is just drag this onto the first pad here and you only get normally you get three options when you drop things on but this is going to basically take all of those slices and spread them out over all of these pads. And we've got a nice playable instrument. So if you've got your keyboard out, you can start jamming away and sort of figuring out some kind of way that this is gonna work. So let's just program in. Obviously I haven't got my keyboard plugged in at the moment. So I'm just gonna literally draw in some MIDI into Groove Agent. So just go into Groove Agent and Remember that we are on C1 upwards. Up to, where is it? Yeah, it's there, so. Tonight. D2 is the last phrase or last word that we've chopped up. Uh, and then all we're gonna do, I'm gonna just draw in whatever, just some Fine. sort of MIDI pattern. I'm just gonna experiment with this. Fine. Oops. Sorry, need to mute our original vocal. Let's just mute that. Uh, and then I'm just gonna, literally gonna play around, try and find a pattern that works. It's gonna be really dead simple. So, okay, I programmed in this little thing. Now, bear in mind, it sounds utterly gash at the moment because it's not pitched or anything like that. This comes later. Now, just a very important point, actually, when you are sort of doing this stage of it, when you're putting these chops together, 
you're really not going for uh, it being pitch correct at the moment. Pitch comes later. We're going to change the pitch. We can do that using Very Audio. Or uh, if you haven't got Very Audio, you'd have to use a third party program like Melodyne or something, which acts as a plugin for Cubase or depending on what software you're using. And then we'll change the pitch after. So this is what we've got at the moment. So just very, very quickly, what I'll do is just show you what it's like if we just pitch up everything. Uh, and you can do this, of course. So if we go into Groove Agent, we're just gonna select all our pads, uh, hold down Shift and click one and then click the last one. And then we're just going to change the pitch. Let's change it up by seven semitones. So just that the sound is coming a bit late. So we're going to go as uh, this one, F1. So let's just go into Groove Agent quickly and just modify that. So here we go. Just going to change the start point of that. So it's a bit further on. Uh, so it's a bit more instant. Okay. And find actually is a bit. Uh, that's also a bit late as well, so I'm just going to edit that. The start point. That's better. Okay, so let's just go with that. It's not sounding too bad, but what we want to do is make it sound a bit more palatable. So we're going to now render this out. So we've got to go Alt or Command on a Mac, right click, go to Render in Place, Render with Current Settings. Now we've got the audio version of Groove Agent, our vocals. So we can now go into this and we can go to Very Audio, Edit Very Audio, and we've got all our pitch information there. And as a reference, let's use our Venger, which is the sort of pad playing in the background track. So we've got our MIDI notes as reference so we can see what we've got going on. So it's actually not sounded too bad, but I'm going to a turn it down because it's way too loud. And... Okay, so I mean, it's kind of sounding okay, it's not too bad, but we can obviously mess with the pitch and the format if we want to, so we can try changing this. Uh, so it's all on the same uh, notes as what's being used in that chord. Although, actually saying that, uh, where was it? It was in A sharp, and we could have this up to C, perhaps. So that's the root note of our first chord. Uh, but I kind of like it where it was actually, it sort of had a nice... Okay, so anyway, that's kind of fine, I don't mind it, it's going to need a bit of experimenting with. But now we can sort of mess with the formant and everything. So we're going to go through and just do like we showed, like I showed earlier in the formant lesson. And let's have these going down in formant. So again, we're doing this sort of gradual formant increase or decrease over time. It really works well. It adds a nice bit of sort of movement to the vocal. And again, we'll have them going up. And then let's just have all of these left right down. Uh, let's go about 80. using the uh, volume control on the very audio segments to modify the volume of them. Uh, and that doesn't sound quite right. So again, uh, we're going to do this more gradually. So we're going to start off, uh, snip, actually let's start off, highlight all of them, go down in formant about 12% and then just going to select the next lot, carry on going down. until we are right down. And let's see what that sounds like. There we 
we go. So that's pretty cool, but obviously it's not finished. We need to add effects to that. So let's just whack on some compression. In fact, sod that. Let's go for quadrifers and add a bit of drive to the high end. And very importantly, let's get some reverb on there. And there we go, we've got a not bad section actually. I'm quite happy with that. Let's just have a listen from the chorus going to that. So we're gonna to have to take something out there, probably that sort of up type thing in the background because there's too, way too much bus uh, busyness in that section. And it kind of doesn't quite flow at the moment from the chorus to that, I don't think. But it's not bad, it's getting there, it's certainly workable. Um, just need a bit of tweaking, a bit of experimenting just to sort of make that work. Uh, so right, that's um, one very easy and kind of cool way of doing it. So I hope that was helpful for you. Thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it. And if you want to get a much deeper understanding of vocal recording and mixing, then check out our full course on exactly that. It's over five and a half hours spread over 34 lessons on everything you need to record and mix great vocals every time. Thanks for watching guys and girls. I'll see you in the next one.